Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests today, including Kelly McCrimmon, standing by, are brought to you by the Waddling Dog Pub. Their 50-seat patio is open seven days a week with a new menu coming soon featuring the Donnie and Dolly cocktail. Swing by their attached liquor oh. store to pick up your Donnie and Dolly swag. There are countless reasons to come sit and stay at the Waddling a Dog. It's already been a, a week since we saw the Vegas Golden Knights uh, lift the yeah. uh, Stanley Cup. If they're 9-3, Game 5 victory over the Florida Panthers. And here to talk about that, what happened in the aftermath, Vegas Golden Knights GM, friend of the show, Kelly McCrimmon. Kelly, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm doing real good. How are you guys? Good. The first question is kind of obvious. Uh, Kelly, how's, how's William Carlson doing? <laughs> well, what's ironic, he, he, he gets called Wild Bill uh, – in jest because he's the exact opposite of wild and uh, certainly uh, the legend has grown and uh, for a guy that had drank as much as he obviously has uh, I thought he pulled it off pretty well uh, <laughs> yeah I, uh, I didn't know he was going to get through it but he uh, but he did and I uh, don't have to tell you who the most popular guy was that night no question about it a lot of fun hey what was your reaction Kelly uh, when your owner Bill Foley said the Knights, well, your initial reaction, when he said the Knights would win the Stanley Cup in six years. What did you think at that point? I think everyone just took it sort of as a tongue-in-cheek comment. I, I thought that it might be an accomplishment if we made the playoffs in six years, let alone uh, win the Stanley Cup. It wasn't, uh, you know, some people wonder, you know, if that uh, was pressure that we operated under with that sort of quote-quote mandate, mm -hmm. and it was nothing of the sort. It was... Uh, uh, I felt uh, tongue in cheek, and then uh, you know, as our team made the progress it made, I think it uh, it felt in Bill's mind that it was good to good to double down on it. George McPhee said after you uh, won the Stanley Cup, Kelly, that right off the bat, your group wanted to do things differently. In in, in what ways, in your opinion, did your group do things differently that led to the Stanley Cup? Well, I think there's a lot of things that uh, we felt strongly about and what we believed in in terms of, uh, you know, the makeup of a championship roster, what that needed to look like. Uh, we're very collaborative. Uh, you know, George McPhee, who uh, promoted me to general manager in 2019, uh, we've worked shoulder to shoulder since, uh, you know, since uh, August of 2016. So we've been together uh, for seven years. Tremendous uh, mutual respect, really good uh a uh, good man to work with, intelligent hockey guy, real successful uh, hockey executive. So, um, you know, we've always, in, because of expansion, uh, that expansion process, uh, we had a really involved pro scouting staff. So uh, we've always taken a great deal of input from uh, from that group, which is Von Carpen, uh, led by Von Carpen. And, you know, we... Uh, you know, we use our hockey operations, our analytics. We uh, we make sure that everybody uh, has a voice, has an opportunity to uh, uh, contribute, and then we make uh, make the decisions we make. And I've always uh, believed that you manage the team in front of you. And I, I think that uh, when we got through year one with as much success as we had, I don't think any of us thought that that particular group was necessarily going to sustain that level of success so since that uh, that time we've uh, continually tried to improve it kelly you built a ton of great teams in the western hockey league off the bantam draft when i look at this makeup of this team one drafted player 11 through the trade uh talk a little bit about uh, how this came about the makeup of this stanley cup team well it's uh, it's interesting you ask the question that way because one of the things that intrigued me about going to vegas uh, at the outset is i thought this would be a draft develop slow build type of uh, yeah. uh you know operation and then again it all changed with the success that that first year uh team had we we have a great amateur staff under bob lowes they've done a good job uh in drafting some players we've uh turned uh, some of those picks into uh, to other players and it ties into the point i just made uh previously uh you manage the team that you have so you assess the value of that pick, what it means uh, to you in the future, what it means to you uh, for today's team, 
Uh, you know, you, we, we've never drafted less than six times in a round uh, since we've been established. Uh, even this year, winning the Stanley Cup, we have our first round pick. We have five picks uh, in the draft. A lot of times that's not the case. So, you know, we, uh, we aren't rec reckless. We're trying to do uh, uh, something that we can sustain. But the makeup of the team was based on, uh, you know, a lot of times the general manager goes to a new team. Uh, you've got five or six or seven years of draft classes uh, right. to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have that. And the one thing about uh, expansion, um, the the players that, uh, you know, just using the age groups that were born in 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, were all exempt. We're all exempt. So those were players that were, you know, 19 to 24. So we didn't have any players uh, at all. Uh, in that group. So you need to build your team a little bit differently. And we always refer to that as our empty drawer. And that's where, you know, a college free agent like a Zach Whitecloud trading for Nick Waugh, trading for Keegan Colasar, uh, you know, those guys slot into that area. Nick Haig, who was a late 98 draft, uh, is another guy that's, uh, that's in that uh, same range. So that's, uh, you know, those were smaller trades, but they were designed to build uh, depth in our organization and, and as they improved our team improved Kelly no team has ever won the cup without great goaltending Aiden Hill he wasn't your starter when the playoffs started but now 11 2 and 2 down the stretch how impressive was he he was tremendous he's got a really calm demeanor he made real timely saves he uh, you know sees big moments he had two shutouts in our series against uh, Dallas you know, he came in uh, during game three against, uh, you know, you know maybe the best offensive team in the NHL with, uh, with the Edmonton Oilers. He won uh, game three. We uh, won game six in Edmonton where he led in the first uh, two shots and stopped the next 38. So he, uh, he just played uh, tremendously well. Ron Brassois had, uh, had beat, uh, beat Winnipeg in the first round and uh, had played the first uh, two games and then started the third game against, uh, against Edmonton before uh, injuries uh, affected his ability to play. And Aiden came in and did, uh, did a tremendous job. Uh, Kelly, you, you win the Stanley Cup, and you, you haven't got um, a large amount of UFAs to deal with. You mentioned Hill, uh, Brassois, uh, there's Barbachev. What are your off-season priorities? We want to uh, we want to see where we're at with our own UFAs before we look uh, outside our organization. We feel that we'll uh, have the ability to uh, keep our roster, uh, you know, fairly intact compared to what uh, maybe past Stanley Cup champions have been able to do, based on the fact that we all operate in a cap world. So we're uh, we're hopeful that we can, um, you know, we've got. You know, one RFA on our team. We've got the UFAs that uh, that you mentioned, and uh, you know, as much as uh, you mentioned at the top of the show, it's a week since we won uh, the Stanley Cup. We're uh, we're in full swing in terms of uh, preparation for uh, the draft next week in Nashville, and of course, uh, free agency on the first of July. We've got that window of time uh, to work with our guys uh, to see where we're at there. Who did you think of? I think I know the answer, Kelly. But who did you think of when you you raised the Stanley Cup when you lifted the cup? Yeah, the, when you uh, you know, I, I've, I've described it this way to a lot of people. You you, you feel you have an idea of what it might be like uh, to win, and you get on the ice with uh, with uh, the players and the families and your own family, and you realize that it's just so much more. Uh, than what you anticipated. So, you know, for me, my family were all there, which uh, made it really meaningful. I've always said to my family, any accomplishment in life is only special if you've got uh, the right people uh, to share it with. And then, of course, uh, you know, Brad, because uh, uh, he'd have been so proud, uh, you know, of what uh, we were able to accomplish and win a Stanley Cup. And, and, uh, and then my mom and dad, because, uh, you know, now I'll have my name on the Stanley Cup as Brad does from his uh, Stanley Cup championship as a member of the Calgary Flames. Uh, the families of our players, because, uh, you know, we just had these conversations within our own family. You know, I remember when Brad won as a player, you know, being his brother, being his biggest yeah. fan, my parents, obviously, uh, my wife, uh, Terry, we, you know, couldn't have been more invested in his journey to win. And you're absolutely thrilled when 
uh, when it happens. Well, I see that in the eyes of all of the players' families uh, on the ice. That was a different perspective for me that I hadn't uh, really thought about. And then, uh, you know, just the hugs from the guys. You 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 uh, have a relationship with uh, with every single player. And, uh, you know, some of those goes back to, you know, year one of uh, our franchise. Some of those relationships goes, go back uh, further than that. Some are players that have, uh, you know, just recently been acquired, but just how uh, grateful you feel that for me was, uh, you know, the overwhelming emotion was just gratefulness or gratitude, I should say. And then, uh, ha <clears throat> happiness for the people in the organization for, <clears throat> excuse me, for Bill and Carol Foley. And then, uh, obviously for George. This is the fourth or fifth time we've had you on the show. We have we have you on uh, more than any member of the Connection. <laughs> we we, we, we yeah. they, they don't like Rick. They don't like yeah, they, us. They, they, they know you better. Well, Rick's problem is that he <laughs> carries the water and does the bidding for the agent. Right? <laughs> yes, and we all know it. And and it and it begins to work against you. When it's that consistent. <laughs> when it's that consistent, it becomes a pretty well known fact. I think you and I have talked about this, Don. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, I'm right with you, Kelly. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm right with you. I'll give him heck off the air. Kelly, th thanks for this, and, and congratulations. All, all the best. Have a great offseason. Thanks, thanks, man. Uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. Thanks, Kelly.